We were talking about light last time. And so just a quick review. Parts of a wave, we have wavelength, we have amplitude, we have frequency. And we were just starting to talk about this important equation. There's not a lot of calculations in this unit on electrons. This is one of them. You'll need to be able to do some calculations with this and manipulate it. Um, but you know, before, before I get into this, I want to talk a little bit more about light as a wave. So before I get into the actual math and the uh, algebraic manipulation of this thing, I want to talk a little bit more about light as a wave because it's kind of it's kind of a problem, like theoretically, because usually a wave is defined as a displacement. transmitted through a medium. Through a medium. Now, when I say a medium, I'm not talking about a fortune teller here. We're not talking about some sort of seance. This is a medium meaning like a material, a go-between. So picture this. Here, Here's me, and I've got a rope and what I'm doing is moving my hand up and down with the rope in my hand and then the rope goes like this right so what's happening is as I'm moving my hand up and down that displacement that vertical motion is being transmitted through space or transmitted um, horizontally in this case, through the rest of the rope because each next part of the rope is connected to the part before. So if I move this part of the rope, then the next part has to move and the next part and the next part and the next part. So that, that's the wave. Same thing happens in water. When you're in the water, you're on your raft. So maybe I have one of these tubes and I'm making waves right i'm moving if i'm moving up and down in my tube then that motion that upward motion moves out from me because the water's basically connected to all the other water so that motion gets moved out from the center so here's the thing if light is a wave what is the medium If light is a wave, what is the medium? What is the stuff that's waving? It's not water. It's not air. Now, for years, I mean, uh, like, I don't know, for almost a century, people thought it was something called, they basically invented this stuff called the luminiferous ether. And this might kind of uh, remind you of, like, phlogiston or something like that. It's one of those invented substances that has since been abandoned. And what is it? Well, they made it up. They said it was, it was a massless substance that permeated the universe. And the only reason they said it even existed at all was because they needed something for light to move in. They needed something for the light waves to be in. So it was a massless substance permeating all things problem is it doesn't exist okay now they they thought it did and I mean I'm I'm not saying just people imagining this but this was like all the the physicists believed in this stuff and kind of wrote their equations based on it and everything it was disproven and I'll put that in quotes nothing's really disproven and especially in this case by this famous experiment called the Michelson-Morley experiment named after these two blokes who conducted this thing and the basic idea I don't I've never fully understood it but if you think about the earth moving so here's the earth through space 
if there is this thing called the ether, picture it like this is the ether. And if the Earth is moving through the ether, then they figured out that if they measure the speed of light going this way or versus going this way, they should get a different result because of something called the ether drag. So if the Earth is like moving through this substance, and if light is a wave in this substance, then the speed of the waves would be different depending on which direction you measured them in with respect to the Earth's orbit. So like if you measure it in the same direction that the Earth is moving, or if you measure it perpendicularly, if there was an ether, you would get a different result. The idea is like if you're in a boat and you're, say you're in a boat and you're, you're making waves go out from the boat, that they'll actually be moving different speeds depending on which direction you send the waves. And they found out that there was no difference, no detectable difference in the speed of light whether they, in what direction they measured it. So they said there's no ether. Okay, so now we don't have a substance for the light to move through. So what do we do now? So now we say this, that light is simply waves in the electromagnetic field. Electromagnetic field. So the electromagnetic field is a force field, literally. It's a, a field of force, and you can visualize it like this. <clears throat> you guys have probably seen this sort of thing before. You take a magnet, and then you sprinkle iron filings over it. And the filings kind of line up. I don't know if you can see this from there. You probably can't, but... Maybe you can see them. They kind of like, they're standing up on each other. So that it looks like fur almost. And so I'll draw you a little picture of it. If this is a magnet, they'll actually line up something like this. And then they'll be standing up like, like fur on the top. So that is, Actually, this would be this is because that's the poles. If I if I had it lying down flat with the poles north and south like this, that's what it would look like. So they line up. These are lines of force. This is a magnet. So that's just an illustration of the electromagnetic field. Now you might you can kind of see now what if I took this magnet, whoops, and I started waving it around. Well, it's creating this distortion in the electromagnetic field. That's what's bending. That's what's making those things line up. There's a distortion in the field. There's a disturbance in the force. And if I go like this, not enough geeks in this class. Nobody got that one. If I go like this with this thing, if I go like this with this magnet, it's going to make, it's going to make waves in the magnetic, electromagnetic field. It really does. It's just like, think about the electromagnetic field like water. If I go like this, it's going to make waves, and they're going to go out from me in all directions, actually, and they're going to move at the speed of light. When I go like this, a wave just went out from this thing at the speed of light. It's really not, pa it's passing through the air. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's going through the air. Now, it's not the air, though. That's, it's not a wave of air. It's not a wave in the air. It's like bypassing the air. Okay? Now, you can make these waves. You can make these waves with electrical or magnetic devices, um, objects or devices. So in other words, and today, it's not real dry today, but I'm going to try it anyway. I have a little demo. Um, 
Let's see if it works. Let me pause this. So there are waves in the electromagnetic field, and I'm going to show you kind of what would happen here. So here's me with um, some charged object. So let's say this object has negative charge on it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wave this thing up and down. Okay, so I'm going to wave this object up and down. So I'm just going like this. Now, here's the deal. As I do that, waves go out through the electromagnetic field. This is an electromagnetic <coughs> wave. And they go in all directions. It goes out in all directions because the field goes out in all directions. So if I, went, if I did this with a frequency, so I'm going to make a little chart here. And this chart is on page 373 in your book figure 1310, we're in chapter 13. If I put frequency, that little guy right there is frequency, that's new, and it, it stands for frequency. If I could wave this thing at 10 to the 6 times per second, that second to the minus 1 means per second. If I could wave this charged object like that pipe and wave it up and down a million times per second, I would be generating radio waves. Now this is a little confusing because I just said that I was making radio waves and I obviously wasn't rubbing that thing a million times per second. So there's more than one way to generate electromagnetic waves. It would work if I just, if I literally moved it up and down a million times per second. But the other way is for an energy transition to take place, and the energy is equivalent to a certain frequency. And we'll get into that next week. But that's what was going on with the radio. But if I could just take this thing and literally move it up and down a million times per second, which obviously I couldn't unless I was uh, like one of the X-Men or something, it's going to make radio waves. If I continue going faster, so now I'm at, say... 10 to the 10th times per second. Now, think about how large these numbers are because they're, they're going to get astronomical. But even now, we're talking about uh, 10 billion times per second. This is microwaves. So in other words, the frequency generated by your microwave oven is 10 billion times per second. That's the frequency of the waves. Both radio waves and microwaves are part of what's called the electromagnetic spectrum. Electromagnetic spectrum. If I continue to speed it up so that I'm moving it at 10 to the 13th times per second, I'm suddenly making infrared radiation. Yes. No, um, it does damage your food. I mean, it cooks it, you know, but it doesn't leave anything bad. No, it's not, you know, these are actually, this is actually called radiation. It's all called radiation. So we would say radio waves are even a form of radiation, but it's different than like alpha particles or beta particles or stuff like, there's no like particles that are left in the stuff. It's just electromagnetic waves. They might destroy things like the proteins and stuff like that, but they're not like leaving something new in there. Now, that changes a little bit when we get up to the high end though here. We're at low frequency radiation right now. This is infrared. So if I was actually able to say charge up this pen and start moving it a million times per second, I would start making interference on that radio. If I could go 10 to the 10 times per second, I'd be able to cook food on the counter because it would be microwaves coming out. 
If I speeded it up to 10 to the third, by the way, there's a guy, there's people on the internet who um, disassemble microwaves and they take out what's called the magnetron, which is the source of the microwaves. I saw one guy, one site on there. He took it out and he built what's called a waveguide. So he, he built a metal sheet around it to protect himself. And he said he claims to be able to cook a hot dog on the counter with it. It's like a gun, so he like aims it at things, and it shoots the microwaves, right? It's not safe, no. It's not safe. So 10 to the 14th, or 10 to the 13th, sorry, as soon as I get to 10 to the 13th, now you start to feel warmth like the warmth of a wood stove coming from my pen. Because infrared, yeah, you would actually probably feel warmth from the microwave also. It'd, it'd be a little different. Microwaves are making the water molecules in your flesh uh, vibrate, and that's what's heating them up. Well, microwaves, microwaves actually have a little metal screen in the door that keeps the microwaves inside. They can't get out. It's safe, yeah. Yeah. Now, if I speed it up even more, Somewhere around 10 to the 14 times per second, I'm going to start to see red light. Now listen. A million times per second, radio. Then microwaves. I get to 10 to the 13th, infrared. I get up toward 10 to the 14th times per second, and suddenly the pen starts to look red. Because you're seeing red light. Because now the frequency matches the frequency of red light waves and your eyes interpret that as the color red. Now your eyes can't detect any of the of the lower frequency stuff. You have, we have, uh, we can detect infrared because it feels like warmth. But our eyes can't see it. Yes? I don't know if you could make a robot. You could, what you could do is possibly just make an electron go up and down that fast. And that would work. So you could make, you know, I don't know how they make transmitters, like radio transmitters, but maybe that's how they do it. I don't know. So as I continue to speed it up, I go a little bit faster, it turns orange. A little bit faster, it turns yellow. Green, blue, indigo, violet. And then if I speed it up a little, now by the way, these are all within 10 to the 14th power. So these are, these are all like, I can't show it right on here. I'd have to crunch them all into a narrow strip, all within 10 to the 14th. Once I get to 10 to the 15th, suddenly it disappears again. You can't see anything, but you start to get a sunburn because it's making ultraviolet radiation. So I've started my own tanning salon up here by just moving this thing up and down 10 to the 15 times per second. You all get a free tan 10 to the 15 times per second. Now, if I continue speeding it up to the point where I get around 10 to the 18th, x-rays. So now, we've got rays now, folks that can go right through your body, x-rays, right through you. In fact, the only thing that you're going to stop them with is like a sheet of lead. So they're going to go right through you. Yeah. They, you would absorb it, yeah. Now, that's x-rays. The next one, if we get up to 10 to the 20th, gamma. What? Because, like, we can't really do, like, that 10 to the 20th Not physically, no, but, um, well, you know what? Actually, as these frequencies get higher, um, they're usually being generated by energy transitions, which, like I said, with the electrons jumping around. So the electron's not actually moving that fast. It's just that it's losing energy, and that energy is being translated into a wave of a certain frequency. And uh, we'll get into that more.
in the future. It's a little weird. Remember, light waves, they're not really waves. And they're not really particles. There's something in between. Or both at the same time. Yes? Ovens use infrared. That's why you see that. You see the red glow in your, if you have an electric oven. The red glow is you're seeing red light, but there's a lot of infrared that you're not seeing. And it's that infrared that's, that's heating up the oven, cooking the food. Microwaves don't use infrared. They use microwave radiation. More powerful, actually. Yeah. For the same amount of power, yeah. I mean, think about this. They cook faster, for one thing. The other thing is you can... Um, you can do amazing things with microwaves if you want. Did I did I show you the thing with the? You can melt you can melt metals in microwaves. Yeah, I blew up I blew up an empty uh, coffee mug once in a microwave. I forgot. No, I I was tired in the morning and I put my mug in the microwave and I hadn't put any water in it and I set it on like three minutes and I went away and I heard a bang and it had literally the cup had exploded inside the microwave it just got so hot that it it blew up yeah I didn't put anything in it yeah yeah So it got so hot that it actually ignited. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Did I show you the thing with the... Yes, I did. I didn't show you the microwave trick? Yeah. Kevin, excellent. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Okay. Anyway, folks, listen. We got to wrap this up. So gamma waves, gamma waves are the highest frequency. In your book, they talk about something called cosmic rays up here. But a lot of books wouldn't put that because they will consider cosmic rays to be particles. Now, one of the things we're going to see as we go into this is as as the frequency of the electromagnetic waves increases, then they start to behave more like particles and less like waves. And we'll see that as we next year, as we go into, the, I mean, next week, as we get into this further. The more, the lower the frequency, the more it's like a wave and behaves like a wave. The more it's, the higher the frequency, the more it behaves like a point, like a particle. Now, if we look at this, First of all, I want you to realize what we're saying here. These are all the same stuff. Visible light, the only difference between red light and microwaves is the frequency, okay? The only difference between red light and x-rays is the frequency. They're both waves in the electromagnetic spectrum. Imagine this, and I think this is going to be possible before too long. Imagine, because we already have like goggles, for example, that can take infrared light and change it into visible light, right? So what if you had a device where, say, you were wearing something like Google Glass or maybe it was even a, a digital lens for your eye that could enable you to see this full spectrum? So maybe, I don't know how you would see them, maybe they'd be fed into your brain as new colors. Or maybe they'd be some totally new sensation. Do you know what's something that's really cool that I found out about a few weeks ago? They've done studies where um, they found out that your brain can learn to interpret new senses. So, like, for example, they take, um, there's a device that they can put on your tongue, and it stimulates your tongue with electrical impulses. And listen. No, listen to what I'm saying. They, it stimulates your tongue with electrical impulses, and it has a, it has a camera on it. And they can use this, and a blind person can put this on their tongue, and the camera is looking around and translating that into impulses, and their brain can actually learn to 
detect where objects are with that device. They can do this with, they've done this kind of thing with mice where they can link a thing in with their brain and the mice can learn to see through different modes. Your brain learns to reinterpret. Your brain actually figures out what this new stimulus means and translate it trend and learns to translate it. So, I mean, just imagine we see that you have to look in your book to see this. The visible light is literally a sliver of this whole spectrum. So we are experiencing only a small sliver of what's really out there to experience. It is it is roughly in the in the middle of the range, although you're looking at ten to the sixth, yeah, it's it's roughly in the middle of the range. But the I mean, like bees can see in the UV, they think. There's some mammals that can that they think can see in the IR, into the IR range. But what if you could expand this whole thing? For example, these little guys are transmitting in radio waves. So right now we're we're all being kind of flooded with we're in we're in a kind of flood of radio waves that are just everywhere, but we can't see it. We have no experience of that. You can't tell if my phone's on or off right now. But someday you might be able to look at it and see the waves being emitted from it. All right, so C equals lambda nu. This is new, and C is the speed of light in a vacuum. I mentioned this last time. And I think I mentioned last time that, that light, I think right off the bat, as soon as we start talking about light, you need to know that this is in a vacuum, that the speed of light actually does vary in other materials. It doesn't move quite as fast in glass or water or air. This is how we can make prisms or those diffraction glasses that we used. It's because the speed of light actually varies in different substances. So, but in a vacuum, say in outer space, it is 3.00 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And it's not going to vary much from this in air. So, I mean, not, it's not even going to vary significantly from this. So we can use this whenever we're talking about light, say, moving on the earth and, or in space or anything like that. That's fast. We're talking about 186,000 miles per second. It's pretty wild um, when you think about how fast that's, that's going. Yet, do you know that we have very little chance of actually colonizing um, other planets unless we can exceed this? because the distances in space are so great that unless um, humans can somehow exceed the speed of light or bypass it, it's going to be very difficult to actually colonize like other galaxies, for example. Yeah. What, three, four hundred miles an hour? You mean like a passenger airplane? I think so, but I'm not, not sure. Well, those are going like, what, a thousand? No, speed of sound. That's different. What's a thousand meters per second? Something like that. Anyway, so how do we use this equation? You have to be able to do calculations with this. Let's ask a question. All right, so we got radio waves. What is the wavelength? What is the wavelength of a typical radio wave? So if I look at my chart above, I look at my chart up there, I've got 10 to the 6, that's my frequency, so here's how it's going to look. Wavelength is lambda, frequency is nu, so I've got 10 to the 6th power, and that is in per second. So I'll just put that over seconds, per second. By the way, that's the same thing as hertz. Have you ever heard of hertz, HZ? So, so per second, per second is the same as second to the minus one, which is the same as hertz. So when you see megahertz, in other words, a radio wave is about one megahertz. Its frequency is about one megahertz. 
So how do I solve this? Well, we know this is now equal to this, 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. So I can, and let me write this like this so we don't confuse things here. Ah. Let's solve for lambda. So lambda is going to be equal to 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second times seconds over 10 to the sixth. What I'm doing here is I'm just dividing by, I'm dividing both sides by 10 to the sixth. I'm just showing it to you in kind of a factor label style. So then seconds cancels out. The 10 to the 6 really doesn't have any units. I mean, you could call it waves if you want, waves per second. And then 3 times 10 to the 8th over 10 to the 6th is what? 3 times 10 to the 2nd. And the units? Meters. So that wave is 300 meters long. So what we mean is that radio wave from crest to crest is 300 meters. That's about, it's, it's more than 300 yards. So think about three football fields. That's the distance between the waves. Now think about this. They're moving so fast that they're hitting that ancient device over there, that green thing. They're hitting that a million times per second, even though there's three football fields between the wave crests. The wave crests are hitting that radio a million times per second. So if you think about this wave, there's three football fields between each wave. And you've got three football fields going into that thing a million times a second. Three million football fields per second flowing into that thing. So that tells you something about the speed of light. It kind of gives you a picture of how fast this stuff is moving. And this sort of calculation is what we're going to be doing next week. And we're going to be talking about its relationship with energy. Any questions? Max.